Hello, trading friends. Welcome back to the Tasty Trade Network. This is Small Stakes, sponsored by the Small Exchange. It's Friday. It's Frank. It's Mikey G, everybody. Mikey, how you doing? I'm doing fantastic. You know, it's been a volatile week across the board, and I think I'm holding in there all right. How about yourself? It's been a volatile week. What are you talking about? It's been super chilled out, man. <laughs> yeah, whatever market you look at, it's been inside its range. Uh, no, I've just been, uh, you know, it, 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 we waited so long, right, for these things to happen. It was like watching um, all of the stock markets climb to all time highs while all the cryptocurrencies just seem to dwindle. And now things are kind of uh, moving together. You got stocks down from Wednesday onward and cryptos down from Wednesday onward as well. Yeah. What you're seeing, everybody, is a man who is extremely long cryptocurrency trying to pretend like everything is okay, everybody. Everything's very uh, chill here. Mikey and Frank are both now very long crypto. And it is uh, the meme of like that little cartoon dude who's like sitting in a house that's burning down and he's like, everything is fine. <laughs> Nothing to see here, everybody. Everything is going to be co- totally okay. I, I, is, am, I, am I wrong or or, or, or am I wrong or what? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're pretty close to correct. Like if you detect <laughs> any like sadness in my voice, not sadness, I'm just feeling a little nasally today. Uh, but yeah, it's been, it's been super interesting because depending on, you know, if you had established positions before or if you didn't, now I think it's still an interesting time. You can add level in or close out. Or if you've never had any exposure to crypto, you're at certainly interesting levels that we haven't seen in the last few months. So I think whatever way you're coming in, whether fresh faced or like pretty experienced, uh, it's definitely interesting. So there's something to do basically across the board. Yeah, I I would tend to agree with you that like, I I think, I don't know, here's here's the deal, friends, like uh, crypto might be a flash in the pan and there might be nothing for crypto in a couple of years from now. And it might uh, not say nothing, but it might be greatly diminished prices uh, Mm -hmm. than what we saw in 2021 uh, in a couple of years from now. But the movement this week and the trending of the last couple of months has created right now an inflection point with Bitcoin at $40,000 and ETH at, where are we at? Are we still, yeah, 30, bounced back to 3,200. They got down mm-hmm. below 3,100. But either way, rounding things off, 40,000 in Bitcoin, 3,000 in ETH creates a really nice inflection point for almost everybody out there, mm-hmm. no matter what your thinking is on cryptocurrency in general, to, to do something or at least start thinking about doing something. From my point of view, I've been loving trading the price action in just like the micro Bitcoin futures and, and just uh, day trading and, and short-term trading in general. The price action in those markets ab- as they've been bouncing around for the last several months here. But uh, for those of you who are, were maybe thinking about getting an investment going, or maybe you're 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 building on your assessment, or you're starting a portfolio of investment, or whatever, or you just want to open up, you know, one or two percent of your portfolio to get some cryptocurrency exposure in there, this is a really nice place to at least look at dipping your toe in. Like as as simple as. You know, Mikey's been going deep on this stuff for you know years, way longer than I have. Um, but I, I've very simply just been every time we see another uh, five thousand dollar fall in Bitcoin and another corresponding you know few hundred dollars or 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 five hundred or a thousand dollar fall in ETH, Mikey. I'm just picking up a little bit here, seeing how it trades. Um, truly practicing what I preach all the time is, uh, when you enter a new asset class, just like keep it small, you know, try 50 bucks, a hundred bucks, a couple, I don't know what small is to all the people out there. Um, but just try it out, buy some, sell some, see how it feels. I mean, this market has been, uh, the most volatile, uh, than any here this week. And, um, it, it, it probably will continue to be volatile, both to the upside and downside throughout the whole year. And I just don't want people, um, no matter what your opinion uh, is, uh, like I always say, opinions and all that stuff, that's for the weekend. Like that's for dinner time or cocktail hour or whatever, um, throw your opinions aside and this year get in on at least the price action in here, trading futures back and forth in crypto or yeah, starting to build a little bit of an investment 
uh, here and, and, and seeing how it all feels. I just don't, I, I hate to see people have an opinion of something and just miss out on a total, the whole experience and a potential, potential uh, profit avenue as well. Yeah. And you nailed a really important point there, which is this is a volatile asset class and we know it's a volatile asset class. I mean, a year ago, ETH was 1200 bucks and Bitcoin was 3200 So it's not like you put this trade on expecting it to be very quiet uh, and not moving around a bit. Um, so just know that is kind of the expectation and try and set some numbers around it uh, to be a little more informed on any of those trades. Absolutely. I mean, you look at a chart like this, Mikey, and it, first of all, off, off, uh, on, uh, just off the top of my head, kind of looks like metals, but like a year uh, forward. You know, like uh, remember, I think it was, and actually, I don't even need to think, I can look. I think gold and silver hit uh, all time highs in the middle part of last year. Yeah. Yes, I am correct here. They came off of them. And then just a ton of volatility, a ton of back and forth. And these cryptocurrencies look a lot like that, just like mm -hmm. six months later. And so this is all to say, I don't think that these markets are very highly correlated with metals. I know a lot of people out there like to say like, oh, this is like the gold market or like the silver market. Uh, I'm more just saying like, it's like something, you know, like it, it's a market with a price with at this point, a very large market capitalization, which just is to say that there's a large backing behind it. Uh, so I don't think it's quite going to zero anytime soon. And thus you can feel hopefully a little confident in at least trading it back and forth or, or starting a little bit of an investment in this space. I know Tastyworks makes it super easy for you to do that. We're trying to bolster our a uh, small exchange crypto offering as soon as possible. It's it's a, a very new field, so it's a very tough field to get all of these uh, products and everything going in. But I just have to continue to call it out because it's something I'm personally getting more active uh, in. And this week, it's been outside of you know tech stock markets here and uh, interest rate markets, but in the opposing direction. Um, it's been one of the most volatile asset classes. So uh, mm -hmm. again, you know, you can have an opinion of something and still, you know, profit profit hopefully from going against that uh, opinion, whether it's long term investing or short term trading. We're going to do a little bit of both, Mikey. I don't know if you're ready for this, but today's segment is buying Bitcoin into the weekend. How do you feel about that? Wow, I had no idea. Uh, I'm thrilled that this is the topic of discussion today. Yeah, Mikey is our, if you've watched the show before, he is our resident crypto head. I mean, just look at him. Like, he's a few years younger than me. He, he, uh, he, he, he's wearing a North Face. He just smacks of crypto bro over there. And uh, he's been in, uh, all joking aside, he's a uh, he's very, very high valued part of the small exchange team and his expertise lend to a lot, a lot of the, um, you know, the technology behind cryptocurrencies and how they function, the different processes behind the different coins and everything else. And so whenever we bring him on, we love to both present some stats. All I can do, I, I, I don't know anything, okay? I don't know anything about crypto or, or any of these other markets. All I can do is crunch a ton of numbers for you all and put you in hopefully a place where you have some edge in the market. But Mikey, has great insight into the different space. Such such great insight that this week I was like, all right, man, everything's getting hammered. I want to buy a couple of things. Of course, I'm going to buy a little Bitcoin and a little ETH. Those are the two. That's like your Apple and Microsoft, right? Like it's like, mm -hmm. all right, stocks are crashing. I can feel good, uh, relatively speaking, at least uh, about parking some money in there. Where else should I go? And he's like, oh, you know, I've been uh, dipping my toe in in this uh, this chain link. That market's up like 25% today. So Mikey uh, knows his stuff. And how are you feeling before we get into some data? How are you feeling about uh, your crypto longs or potentially buying some Bitcoin down? Uh, actually, it was down a couple thousand dollars until just recently rallying back mm -hmm. a little bit here uh, into the weekend. How are you feeling? Yeah, I moved some stuff around on Wednesday. You never know <laughs> if you should buy the dip because we've seen it work before or if it's like the start of the collapse. <laughs> so on Wednesday, I nibbled on a little bit of Bitcoin. And of course, uh, things just kind of continued a little bit lower. Um, but I'm glad you bring up things like Chainlink because a lot of people assume that all cryptocurrencies are correlated. 
and it's kind of the same way that stocks have this connotation too, is like when everything falls, all the stocks fall together. And your diversification only works when things are going up or going sideways. Uh, but it is a nice little anecdote. It just happens to be that it's up today. I had no foresight or whatever. But um, yeah, Chainlink is one of the outperformers today. It's showing a nice green day when everything else is kind of down or even. So you can kind of diversify even within this uh, burgeoning asset class. So I feel and that's a, on my positions. That's a great point to present, at least uh, in the comforting notion of like the cryptocurrency market at large is very similar, at least as it's situated right now at the start of 2022, very similar to the equity market, whereby like we've been seeing tech stocks getting hammered this week but energies and financials kind of around unchanged. And so it is that diversification piece. You don't have to just buy Bitcoin and be like, well, I'm going to live and die by crypto just in general. A lot of these other coins, especially the ones that Mikey puts me on to, uh, serve particular functions, uh, are, are very practical in different technology spaces and have very different exposure relative to Bitcoin. But let's focus on Bitcoin. Let's start where we started last week or where we ended last week, which was to say that we looked at markets with the biggest weekend risk. We wanted to look at stocks, interest rates, metals, foreign exchange, crude oil, and Bitcoin all on your board here and say, okay, these are the movements on any given day. If that given day is from a Friday to a Monday, which is to say a weekend, is there increased risk in any of these markets? And we found that crude oil and Bitcoin, Mikey, were the only ones that saw a big jump in movement, which is to say the ones that presented weekend risk. And so, of course, then I start thinking, you know, is this risk one sided? How does this look, especially after a week like we've seen here, a, a significant down week in Bitcoin? Is there is this increased action uh, skewed to the upside? What are your thoughts on, you know, the study in general? And where do you think we're going to end up with the results here? Gosh, this is a great question. So it's really after a big downslide during the week, do we expect that to continue into the weekend or reverse into the weekend? Am I understanding that? That's exactly, this is a classic, this is an old Molmat special because his whole thing is he, he comes from, in the same way Frank comes from interest rates, Mikey comes from crypto, Molmat comes from a foreign exchange. And a point that he made all the time anecdotally, but I've proven several times for him uh, statistically, was like, if a foreign exchange market is getting pounded into the weekend, it's most likely going to be right where it was on Sunday night when futures open back up. And I took a look, and you can look at actually this data here, where if you keep your eyeballs on SFX, you can see on any given day moves, that's a small dollar, by the way, SFX moves about 0.3% foreign exchange markets, not as volatile as equities and other markets. And then when I filtered for weekends, it actually <laughs> tended to move even less, which is craziness. And so that was a big moment thing. But I did want to take a look here. Yeah. Like, as you say, it's, it's this idea of if I filter for weeks where Bitcoin uh, moved lower, what did the action look like uh, over the weekend? What was the market uh, like on Monday? The, the the week following a down week in Bitcoin and a pretty pretty interesting stuff, right? I think so. Um, my first question is how long of a price history did you use? Because <laughs> unfortunately this data has a lot of skew and, and that's going to influence my my answer, which is going to be even before you reply, it's just going to be higher. Um, but it, it would be interesting <laughs> to, to know. That's how the, far there's the crypto back. bull in Sorry to, right there. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, so actually, I would um, wholeheartedly, genuinely defend. Um, mm -hmm. I, I used the last year of data, which okay. take a look at it, man. This market has not trended in one yeah. direction or the other since uh, 2021. A lot of other cryptocurrencies have, from the start of 2021, you know, moved higher by hundreds of percentage points. But Bitcoin was already kind of there mm -hmm. by last year's start. And so when you start in the 30s there, you get up to 60, you fall back down to 30, you get up to 60, you fall back down to uh, mid-range there. 
I don't see this as being necessarily skewed one way or the other. And we're going to filter anyways for those weeks coming off of uh, down weeks. And so I'm going to compare it to all data anyways and take a look at whether there was relative to the average uh, move in in cryptocurrency, uh, in Bitcoin here in particular, um, if there was any juice on top of or below that average move after those down weeks. And so go ahead, Mikey and his ilk are to the moon <laughs> with it, with everything. And so go ahead and predict that it's going to go higher after that. Sure, down sure. I'll just hold to my answer. Uh, thank you for the explanation. I think it's important that you used this year. I think it's more representative than if you had gone back to a much earlier decade. Uh, but yes, I'll yeah. hold true. I will say higher. Let's see. I'm very That's interested. That's true, actually. Yeah, if I did, if anything, yeah, you're screw you, Mikey. You're trying to come at me here with the uh, with oh, you're 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 curve fitting. I'm not curve. If anything, if I use data from like 2015 until now, then it'd be really skewed to the upside. That's what I'm saying. Because the market's yeah. gone from a from a couple of pennies to thousands, tens of thousands of dollars. That's what so I'm no, saying. No. This is a great subset. Thank you. Oh, thank. Uh, and there is, you hear that producer, John, I finally, I finally got Mikey's blessing. I can, I can die in <laughs> peace now. He's okay. He's okay with my data sets and everything else. Anyways, let's get to the results here as Mikey uh, thought and as the results show. And I want to lend this to just a bigger idea here in a second, but crypto has performed better over weekends following down weeks. And now, Crypto is accessible over the weekend in a lot of places. I don't tend to like to open platforms and get stuff going, especially in new markets like this over the weekend when things are definitely less liquid uh, and I don't know what kind of pricing I'm getting to buy or sell anything. But that's worth noting that these markets are open over the weekend here. And thus, there's going to be a lot of action after the market closes down for the week on Friday. Friday night, Saturday, Saturday night, Sunday, and Sunday night before we look at these results uh, for the, the performance after those down weeks. And you can see here, though, what's particularly interesting to me, Mikey, is after all weeks, Bitcoin has tended to perform uh, the, the day after any close of week. Mikey, up 4.4% with a standard deviation of almost 7%, which is big swings um, there. I would say the S&P 500, the, the, the same data points for the S&P 500 would look something like positive 0.1% on average on any given day and plus or minus maybe one and a half to 2% mm -hmm. on any given day. So, so obviously more volatile, but more skewed to the upside. Now, after those down weeks, it doesn't look like much, but two tenths of a percentage point in that upside favor, uh, even further, is quite large. And knocking off almost a full percentage point in standard deviation, that just lets you know that after Bitcoin has been hit, it tends to move higher, tends to bounce back, buy the dip, all the other things um, there. But also, it doesn't tend to see that big jump in volatility after uh, a, a volatile week there. And what I'm saying by that is like th this market's very similar to stocks. And that's kind of my conclusion. I'm interested to get yours here in a second. It's very similar to stocks, this cryptocurrency market, obviously not in trading. You can see stocks are still very close to their highs as Bitcoin and ETH and a lot of these markets are coming off, getting closer to their lows for the last year. So diversified, different, but very similar traits in that these markets don't tend to be volatile for extended stays, or better to say, they don't tend to see just straight downside action. There is a considerable amount of data that is uh, uh, lending you to think, similar to stocks, that the market bounces back pretty well here. That's really interesting. I actually would not have expected this. It goes against my initial um, thinking, which was that you would kind of see volatility continue to rip. But actually, when you analogize it to things like stocks, we know that that VIX is kind of mean reverting. So after big moves, maybe there is a consolidation period. Um, and it's actually, it's so interesting to see that volatility come in a little bit. And it makes you, I, I think, question your day trading mechanics, not question, but alter them 
a little bit because sure. after a big down move, you kind of want to adjust your position and sizing maybe. And I think this kind of lends to that nicely. And I, I wish, and I hope there were more options on cryptocurrency markets because yeah. this is like the perfect evidence to support selling premium into big down moves and maybe looking to take on neutral positions. Uh, and I think we will see that market kind of come to fruition in 2022. So really cool. Thanks for putting the numbers behind this really against my initial assumptions. Yeah. I mean, there's a million ta tradable takeaways from something like this, which is like, oh, I'd love to sell premium when the market when Bitcoin, excuse me, is getting uh, hit here, I'd love to uh, look at buying the dip or selling puts into mm -hmm. a big down move uh, here. A, a ton of tradable takeaways. But for me, the main thing is like, I can feel pretty confident that this market acts very similar to stocks. But what's really nice is in a diversified way, they don't they don't a lot of times, aside from this week, really, they don't fall together or rally together in the same time frame. So it's it's almost nice to have a similar market with different timing that I can feel confident. Like, I, I, yeah, I'm buying stocks when they fall five to ten percent when they see big moves lower. Just the data is there for for dozens of years that shows you that stocks tend to bounce back. Volatility tends to cluster. And when you get volatility spikes and you sell your strangles and your iron condors and everything else, it's the idea that volatility only spikes for a short period of time mm -hmm. and then it comes back. That mean reverting aspect that you speak to. Same thing with, you know, buying stocks on the dip or buying stocks into uh, a big move lower or into a crash. And we're seeing here as this market matures in cryptocurrency seeing very similar statistics. And it makes me, you know, uh, it, honestly, after doing this, running these numbers, I felt even uh, more pushed to be like, I'm someone who's actively trying to bolster this part of their portfolio. But also, I, I, I also went to the, the small crypto futures and the micro Bitcoin futures from a short-term day trade perspective, Mikey, and looked at some longs in those markets for just the bounce back. And we're already starting to see it here on Friday afternoon. And so from either perspective, short or long term, um, I'm definitely looking at these moves in crypto, Bitcoin in particular here, uh, very similarly to how I would trade stocks, You know, big down move in stocks. I'm looking for a bounce back. We've seen it dozens of times in uh, the last, uh, I'll stop sharing my screen because now Chrome is getting mad at me, uh, in the last year or so where stocks are down big on a Monday or on a Tuesday or on a Wednesday, and then they bounce back the rest of the week. I, I think we can, uh, nothing is for, for sure, Mikey, that Bitcoin is going to open higher on Monday. But when you got that edge in your favor, you got to take it, right? Yeah. The one question that comes to my mind, I'd love to get your take on this is, we don't know when the down week is going to end necessarily. Like Monday could be lower, Tuesday could be lower, whatever. Sure. We, don't, we don't know when it stops. So scaling into positions, how do you incorporate this into trading down moves? I mean, if you had got in on Wednesday, you'd still be down a little bit. I don't think you'd be outside of like a, a day trade range. I don't think you'd be closing. Maybe it depends on your trading style, but do you ever leg into these types of positions when you're taking a contrarian play, like put a little bit on Wednesday, maybe then a little more on Thursday and then watch it much more closely. How do you adjust your positioning there? Yeah, t totally. I mean, it, it's it has to do with a multitude of factors that at the end of the day, uh, I'm being a really good politician here, that end, at the end of the day have to do with you and your account and what you're trying to get done. But I'll, I'll paint it from a couple perspectives here, which is to say, like, if I'm a really small trader or I'm trying to be really small in this space here, then that, and I'm trying to maybe do like one small crypto contract or one mm -hmm. micro Bitcoin contract or something like that, um, then I have to have extreme patience. Like I, I can't be, unfortunately, I can't be taking part in every 5% sell-off in Bitcoin just because uh, that happens pretty often mm -hmm. here. And so for me, if I have that smaller size perspective, then it's a matter of waiting for two or three or four days mm -hmm. lower. You're going to get way less occurrences, but you have to have that patience. Otherwise, 
in a volatile market like this, you're going to get run over a few times, but then, and, and the mechanics help you a ton, you know, to say like, oh, when the market's down 5%, I buy it. And then I'm willing to make or risk 1% and I get out. I, I just, I fear in a volatile market like this, that small trader is going to get dinged a million mm -hmm. times. It's, it's almost like you have to open up those expectations to be like, I'm going to wait for a couple 5% down days, or I'm going to wait for one 10% down day. You just have mm -hmm. to, you have to be, like I say, more patient. Now, if I'm willing to do a couple units or I'm in the cash crypto market and say, okay, I'm trying to get 500 bucks done and I'm going to do it a hundred at a time, then just stay, it's still patience, but just stay mechanical with those entries. Cause I feel, I've felt this myself this last week where it's like, okay, let's say, for example, I've got 500 bucks I'm trying to get done in Bitcoin and I want to do it a hundred at a time. And before I do anything, Bitcoin is at 45 and I'm saying to myself, okay, if it gets below 45, I'm going to get some done. And then mm -hmm. I'm going to save the other four units for when it gets below 40, when it gets below 35 and it gets below 30. And then I'm fully invested if it gets below, you know, 30 or 25. And from there, you know, I, I kind of have to deal with my position from there for better or for worse, but those are huge numbers, right? Mm -hmm. Like it would take weeks, potentially months to break through those levels because Bitcoin has traded pretty comfortably above it for so long. And so the thing with that is if you've got multiple units, you're trying to scale, you have to hold yourself to that because the problem will be like, okay, this week, Bitcoin broke 45. I got my first unit done. And then next week, like we just showed, it's likely that Bitcoin's going to kind of sit around here and maybe not get to your next entry point. But if it doesn't move in a profitable manner or get to your next entry point, don't start putting stuff on and taking stuff off. You got to be patient in a volatile market like this. So that's what I would say uh, there, Mikey, is hold yourself to patience and those mechanics before you even get in. It's essential to crypto, but it's essential to every strategy and every market that we take a look at here on this program. Thank you. Yeah, I really appreciate that analysis because we face kind of this problem every day in the crypto market, given the volatility. So I did it this week where I bought, I, I will cop to it. I bought Bitcoin at, at 45 and then I was like, all right, I'm not buying any more until 40. And then it broke 42 and I was like, all right, I got to pick up some more right here. And it's like, just, you know, you don't want to rush to something like this. And you actually stated it perfectly at the outset of today's segment, which is like, this is likely to be continue to be a volatile market and you don't need in a volatile market you don't need to rush to anything like it, it's it's going to be you know giving you all these different price points several times per day for the next days and weeks and months so thanks so much mikey for joining us here chopping it up on crypto. I know a lot of you out there aren't uh, quite into the crypto markets, definitely not to the extent of uh, Bitcoin bro Mikey over here, but we are just starting to get you more comfortable with the price action here, the strategy showing you that it, it lends itself just uh, very similarly to adding metals or adding foreign exchange to your portfolio. So hopefully you enjoy the content and the data there. I know you'll enjoy Splash into Futures, which is coming up next. Um, Pete Momat and I are going to chop it up on some futures trades. We had a non-farm today. It was kind of interesting. Now we're in Losers Club, as Pete would like to say. And uh, I, I'll see if we can get some trade ideas past him in the next uh, 30 minutes to go maybe through the weekend. Thanks so much for joining me, Mikey. Don't forget to follow him on Twitter, it me, Mikey G on Twitter. He's uh, starting to ramp up his own brand and content and everything else. And he's going to be posting a lot of cool stuff as small exchange continues uh, to grow. And uh, I'll see you all in a little bit. Thanks for watching. Peace.